Chapter 6 Hattie and Angel stay up in the squirrel house for a long, long time. I curl up in the cool grass while Goldie and Patches wander away, muttering to each other. I wait and wait until finally the leafy leaves whoosh, the branches sway, and two pairs of feet are scaling down the giant tree. Yippee! I leap as high as I can, pawing furiously at the bottom rung. That's my short human, I bark. I knew you'd come back. Patty reaches the laddery step just above my head, then jumps. Whee! She shouts, landing in the grass with a giggle. Angel looks like she wants to jump too, but changes her mind. She continues climbing down as I'm springing up. My brown paw swipes Angel's calf, and somehow she loses her footing. Oh no! She wails. I back away as she falls, landing, splat, on the ground. Hattie rushes to Angel's side, her face full of concern. Ow! Angel cries. She rubs her bum, scowling at me. She gets to her feet and dusts off her clothes. All right, she says to Hattie. Hattie looks relieved. Next thing I know, the short humans are heading for the back porch. I bound after them. Hey, wait for me! Angel punches her palm a couple of times. Ball? she asks. Her long wavy hair hangs out the back of her cap like a squirrel's tail. Hattie shakes her head. Jump rope, she says. Angel scrunches up her face. Nah, she says. She pauses for a moment, her gaze wandering. Then her shoulders sink and she disappears through the door. Hattie sighs. She smells disappointed. Don't feel bad, Hattie, I bark, dancing around her feet. We're in the dog park. It's time to play. I shoot out into the grass. But instead of chasing me, Hattie trudges right on by. Try to catch me, I bark, zooming along ahead of her, straight to the giant tree. Hattie grabs onto a high rung and starts climbing. I watch until her feet disappear, my tail drooping. I sink back down. My Hattie does not belong in a tree. My Hattie belongs down here in the grass, chasing me, or scooping me into her arms and showering me with kisses, laughing, having the time of her life, pro protesting when Fetchman makes us leave the dog park to go home. That's my Hattie. But this Hattie is up in the giant tree again. Does she really want to hang out with those nasty squirrels with no royal dog to keep her safe and protect her from grave danger? What if something bad happens to her? Hey, wait a minute, that's it. I run in circles. I know how to get my Hattie back. After all, I'm a professional. I'll save her from dangerous squirrels and evil humans. Why didn't I think of it sooner? It's the best idea ever. She'll remember how important I am and she'll change back to how she was before. She'll be my Hattie again, like she's supposed to be. I spin, spin, every hair on my body itching to get to work. I'll be on guard for the right opportunity. It's only a matter of time. The next day, I follow Hattie around the house. When danger strikes, I'll be ready. Hattie fishes the long jump rope out of her backpack. She zooms into the bathtub room where Food Lady is hanging a wide curtain. Hattie holds out the jump rope. Please, she begs. Food Lady sighs and shakes her head. Hattie's shoulders slump. We hop down the stairs. Fetch Man is in the lounging place, banging on the wall. When Hattie calls out to him, she, he turns around. She shows him the jump rope. Please, she begs. Fetch Man sighs too. He puts a hand on Hattie's shoulder. He speaks to her in a gentle, hopeful voice. I catch one word, Angel. Hattie grimaces, she smells discouraged. I know how she feels. So far, nothing around here looks or smells the least bit dangerous. I'm starting to think my plan to save her isn't going to work when that terrifying sound comes from the front door again. Ding dong! I spring into action. Warning, warning, I bark, bravely rushing to the source of the danger. Nobody go near that door. Fetchman heads right toward it like he doesn't even hear me. Watch out, I bark. It's probably a grave threat to our safety. Ah, a grave threat. This is my big chance to save Hattie. 
I hurry over to her. Bad news, we're all in jeopardy. Stay where you are, I'll protect you. I race back to fetch man, growling and snarling. Totally ignoring me, he opens the door like nothing is wrong. Stand back, I bark. I can handle this, I'm a professional. And sure enough, standing in front of us is an evil human wearing a hard hat on his head and dirty boots on his feet. He's carrying a bag that's heavy and bulging. One whiff reveals German shepherd and telephone poles and a hint of a ham sandwich with mustard. And that's not all, he's whistling, a sure sign of trouble. Fetch man greets the evil human with a cheery voice, like he's happy to see him. He invites him right in, completely unfazed by my growls. Be forewarned, I bark at the intruder. Don't take one step toward that short human over by the couch. The evil human breezes right by, as if he's not even the least bit intimidated. He strolls into the lounging place right toward Hattie. Fetch man and I follow. He's gritting his teeth. I'm bearing mine. I'm ready to nip at some heels if it comes to that. At the flashing screen wall, the evil human stops. He stares at it for a second, even though it's black and not flashing. He squats down and opens his bag. He takes out snaky wires and scary tools. I knew there'd be trouble. Stop right there, buddy. I bark, flinging myself at his leg. There'll be none of those loud noises while I'm around. Fetch man crosses his arms. Hattie, he snaps it as she rushes over, right into the path of danger. Hey, Fetch man is sabotaging my plan. Or is he? Get out of the way, Hattie. I've got this, I bark, thrusting out my chest. This is no place for a short human. Just then a hand reaches down and rubs my head. Fella, says a strange but friendly voice. The evil human. What is he trying to do, throw me off my game? Fenway, Fenway, Hattie says, backing in, backing away and clapping. She clearly wants to play. Not now, Hattie, I bark. Can't you see how busy I am? She claps louder. Fenway, she says. This time she sounds annoyed. What's going on? This is not a part of the plan. Hattie, I'm trying to protect you from this evil human who has invaded our home. I bark and whoa, the menace revs up a roaring tool. I lunge toward his arm, stopping a safe distance from the ear-splitting sound. Put that thing down before someone gets hurt. Hattie hands close around my torso. Fenway, she cries. Cut it out, Hattie, I bark as she lifts me up away from the evil human. I'm supposed to be the one saving you. And that's not the only problem. Hattie smells different, frustrated. She mutters something to fetch man over her shoulder carries me out of the lounging place. Why isn't she happy that her loyal dog is trying to protect her? She keeps on walking to the sliding door. When she opens it, I finally realize what's going on. We're going outside to the dog park. She sets me down on the porch and gazes into my eyes. She points her finger at me. Fenway, she says, her voice serious. There is something important she wants me to know. Probably that she's completely devoted to me and nothing will ever come between us. And it hits me. My plan worked. We're going to play. Same as always. Hooray, hooray, my Hattie is back. But then a terrible thing happens. She opens the door and goes back inside without me.